So uh, I'm Ming-Fei Zhao from McGill University. Uh, today I'm going to show you how we design uh, a mechanism to approximate the optimal gains from trade in two-sided markets. So it's a joint work with uh, Hans Bristol from McGill and uh, my, my, uh, my advisor Yang Cai from McGill and uh, Fa Wu from uh, Zhejiang University. Okay, so here's the uh, one-sided market or call auction, I believe uh, most of you are familiar with. So there are multiple <laughs> buyers, uh, each has a value function or set of items. And uh, it's a Bayesian setting, so this uh, valuation function is drawn from some known distribution. And the, uh, the seller who owns these items want to design the mechanism to uh, sell uh, her items to the buyers. Okay, so uh, in the past few years, there have been uh, increasing interest in how to design the mechanism in two-sided markets. So in the two-sided markets, uh, there are multiple uh, sellers. Each can have a different set of items. Okay, so the major difference uh, between the one-sided market and two-sided market is that in the two-sided market, each seller also has its own value distributions on the uh, set of items that she has. Okay, so and now the mechanism designer is not the seller anymore. So uh, the mechanism designer itself does not own the items. So you can view uh, the designer as a third party or a platform. So for example, uh, consider Uber as an example. The, uh, through Uber, drivers can uh, provide driving services to the passengers, but the Uber itself does not carry these passengers to their destinations. Right? So, um, and in uh, the two-sided market is attributed to many uh, important applications, such as uh, stock exchange and uh, Google Double Click, where um, advisors purchase uh, ad slots from uh, the websites who uh, wish to sell these slots, and also some online uh, exchange markets, such as Amazon and eBay. Okay, so. Uh, the simplest setting of the uh, two-sided market is called bilateral trading. So here, only one buyer, one seller, and one item. And the mechanism designer wants to design a mechanism to incentivize both buyers and sellers to uh, report their values truthfully and uh, to maximize a certain objective function. Uh, for example, efficiency. Okay, so there are uh, two ways to measure the efficiency. The first one is social welfare, which is the sum of the buyer's and seller's value after running the mechanism. And uh, the second way is uh, called gains from trade, okay? So it's defined as the increment of the social welfare. So for example, if the buyer has value five and the seller has value two for the item, after the trade is made, the social welfare is five. However, uh, the gains from trade is five minus two, which is three, okay? So uh, I think some of you might already see the relationship between the social welfare and gains from trade is that the social welfare equals to the gains from trade plus the seller's value. So by realizing that, you can see uh, the, uh, the problem to maximize the social offer it's, uh, and, and the problem to maximize the gains from trade are exactly the same problem. However, if you look for approximation, since uh, the gains from trade has a lower value, any approximation ratio to the optimal gains from trade can imply the same approximation ratio to the social offer. However, the uh, opposite way is not true. Okay, so the social, uh, the uh, gains from trade is harder to approximate than the social offer. Okay, so in our paper, we consider the gains from trade as our objective function. Okay, um, to maximize the gains from trade, the best case we can expect is to trade whenever the buyer's value is greater than the sales value. However, in uh, 1981, Myers and Satisweight showed that there's no Bayesian system compatible individual rational and budget balance mechanism can achieve for gains from trade. So here, the BIC and RR constraints are, have, uh, have the same definition as in the one-sided market, which incentivize both buyers and sellers to report their values truthfully. And uh, the uh, budget balance constraint is another good property that we want our mechanism to have, um, and it's specialized to two-sided markets which means that in every uh, bid profile, in every scenario, the payment from the buyer is equal to the payment to the seller. So basically, there's no money coming to the, me uh, coming to the mechanism and there's no money going out, okay? By their result, uh, we have seen that we cannot gain uh, full gains from trade. So then what is the best value we can expect or uh, what is the optimal uh, mechanism that maximizes the gains from trade? In Myers and Satisway's paper, they also provide such an optimal uh, big iron budget balance mechanism to uh, maximize the gains from trade. Unfortunately, 
the optimal mechanism they provide has an extremely complex allocation and payment rules, uh, which requires to solve a set of differential equations that might depend on the buyers and sellers' uh, distributions. So uh, here's an example. If the buyers and sellers uh, both have the uh, value, value distribution uh, uniform between 0 and 1, in the optimal mechanism, the trade is made if and only if the buyer's value is a quarter greater than the seller's value. And the price rule is defined as B plus S plus a half divided by three. So both of the uh, allocation price rules in the optimal mechanism is hard to interpret, even for this simple example. So it's hard to explain where this, this uh, quarter came from, and it seems that it has nothing to do with these price rules. Okay, so motive is by this caveat, people start look to uh, look for an approximation. So the question is, is there a simple mechanism can, uh, uh, can approximate the uh, optimal uh, efficiency? The answer is yes. So if you look for a social welfare, there's a line of great works uh, shows the uh, constant factor approximation in the surprisingly broad settings of the two-sided market. And the state of the art result by uh, Badashi et al. Uh, will be shown just after our talk. Okay? So uh, if you look for a gate swamp trade, a different line of work showed that the efficiency in the gate swamp trade will diminish when the market goes large. So this basically means that you can get asymptotically the optimal gate swamp trade for a sufficiently large number of symmetric buyers and sellers. However, without the uh, large market assumption, the results are quite uh, sparse, especially for the uh, bilateral trading setting. So in 2008, Microfay provides a half approximation uh, if, the buy, uh, if the median of the buyer's distribution is greater than the median of the seller's distribution. And in 2016, uh, Blum Rosa and Mizorahi provide a one of e approximation if the buyer's distribution has monotone hazard rate. So this is a special case uh, of the regular distributions. And both of these results need to assume, need to make some assumption on the uh, buyers or sellers distributions, and it does not work for general distributions. And this is exactly the problem that we overcome in our paper. So in our paper, we show that in the bilateral trading setting, even with arbitrary sellers and buyers value distributions, there exists a simple big uh, IR and budget balance mechanism that can achieve half of the optimal gate swamp trade. So here's the mechanism used in our proof. I will provide uh, two mechanisms, and the better of these two is half optimal. So the first one is called seller offering mechanism. In this mechanism, the, uh, the seller is asked to post a price, QS, that depends on her value and the buyer's distribution. And then the seller will ask the buyer whether she will, uh, she's willing to buy the item at price QS. If the buyer says yes, then the trade is made, and uh, the buyer will pay QS to the seller. Okay? So it's not hard to argue that this kind of mechanism is big IR and budget balance, and we also note that it's also the mechanism used in uh, Blum Rosen and Mizrahi's paper. Okay? So here's the second mechanism that we used. Uh, it's called buyer offering mechanism. So in this mechanism, we basically switch the roles between the buyers and sellers. Okay, so now the buyer is asked to provide a uh, posted price. That depends on her value and the seller's distribution. And the buyer will ask the seller whether she is going to uh, sell his, his, uh, her item at price QP. If the seller says yes, then the trade is made, and uh, the buyer will pay QB to the seller. Okay, so in our paper, we show that the optimal gains from trade is upper bounded by the uh, sum of the gains from trade of these two mechanisms. And in the future slides, I will show you how we prove this theorem. Okay, so the second main contribution of our paper is that we extend this uh, half approximation result to a more general setting called double auctions. So in a double auction, each seller only owns one same type of item, and each buyer only wants one of them. Okay, so again, it's a single dimensional setting where each uh, buyer's and seller's value is a scalar. Also, uh, we allow 
arbitrary downward close feasibility constraints on what buyers and sellers can trade at the same time. So for example, if uh, the feasibility constraint is show, uh, contains all the uh, set of uh, buyers and sellers pairs with size at most k, so it means that in the mechanism, at most k pairs of buyers and sellers can trade at the same time. Okay. So this is our mechanism in the uh, double auctions. We first build a bipartite graph between the buyers and sellers, and we assign the edge weight to be the buyer's virtual value minus the seller's true value. So here, the, uh, the phi is defined as the Marsden's virtual value function for buyer i. Okay? So it, it is only for uh, regular distributions, and uh, for non-regular distributions, uh, we can just replace this one with the aren't Marsden's virtual value. Okay? And after that, we will choose a uh, maximum weight matching uh, on this bipartite graph under the feasibility constraint. Okay, so there, if there are multiple, uh, if there are multiple uh, maximum weight matching, we will break ties arbitrarily. Okay, after we chose the maximum weight matching for each I, our IJ pairs in the maximum weight matching, by I will trace with seller J. And for the payment, each buyer or sellers will pay or receive its uh, threshold payment. So the threshold payment is defined as, for the buyer, it's defined as the smallest buyer's value such that uh, the buyer can still win some item. And uh, similarly, uh, for the seller, it's defined as the largest seller's value such that the seller can remain to uh, sell her item. Okay, so just to make sure we're on the same page, uh, here's the example. So suppose in one of the uh, bid profile, uh, the left-hand side is the uh, buyer's virtual bid, and uh, the right-hand side is the seller's true bid, okay? So here's the, uh, we chose the uh, feasibility constraint that contains all of the sets of uh, buyer's and seller's pairs with size at most two. And uh, we'll take this one as our maximum matching. And for the payment, for example, for our buyer I, we notice that if the buyer, well, sorry, for buyer one, if the buyer one choose to decrease her bid so that uh, her virtual bid is smaller than six, she will not get the item anymore because uh, the two items will be allocated to the second and the third buyer. So the amount of money that the buyer one has to pay is phi one inverse of six, okay? So similarly, the, the amount of money that seller one gains is five. Okay. So we notice that in our mechanism, the allocation rule is monotone, which means that it's non-decreasing on the buyer's value and non-increasing on the seller's value. And also, with the uh, threshold payment, we can argue that our mechanism is dominant striding system compatible and individual rational. So the only remaining problem is that if our mechanism is a budget balanced mechanism. So I uh, some of you might already see that with this threshold payment, it might be true that uh, the uh, amount of money that the buyer pays might be different from the amount of money that the seller gains. However, it turns out we can prove that in expectation of the uh, seller's and bid, uh, buyer's distribution, the sum of all buyer's payment is at least as much as the expectation of the sum of all, bid, uh, of all seller's gains, okay? So basically, the, uh, the mechanism itself don't need to pay extra money. So it can collect all the monies that is left, okay? So here's the second uh, mechanism, uh, buyer offering mechanism. Oh, sorry. So the only difference here is that now the uh, edge weight is decide as the buyer's value minus the uh, seller's virtual value. So here, this tau, it's uh, sort of similar, but a little bit different from the Marsden's, uh, classic Marsden's virtual value. We just uh, define as the Marsden's virtual value for the seller, okay? And now we just do uh, what, whatever is similar to the uh, first mechanism. And we proved in our paper that the optimal gains from trade is upper bounded by the sum of the gains from trade of these two mechanisms. I will not be able to show you the, uh, the proof of this theorem, but let's see how we prove it for the bilateral trading setting, okay? So to, uh, so to prove an approximation, we first need to come up with a benchmark of the optimal gains from trade. And 
uh, to some, some of you uh, that's familiar with the uh, Duati framework, in two, one side of the market, uh, Ty Dewine and Weinberg come up with this uh, Lagrangian Duati framework to come up with the benchmark of the optimal revenue. So here, we extend their uh, duality framework to the two-sided market. So the one of the major difference here is that in our duality framework, we need to accommodate also the budget balance constraints. And use the duality framework, we obtain an upper bound for the optimal gains from trade for a general, even for the multi-dimensional uh, two-sided markets. And specialized to the bilateral trading setting is, uh, is the following. So the optimum gains from trade is upper bounded by the maximum over all allocations between zero and one, the expectation of the allocation, allocating probability times the uh, buyer's value plus the uh, buyer's virtual value minus the seller's cost minus the seller's virtual cost. So if you, so from, uh, for some of you who are familiar with uh, the duality framework, you can view as uh, you can view this whole term as the uh, mar uh, as the uh, virtual gains from trade. So we're just doing something similar as in the one-sided markets. Okay. So if you're not familiar with this framework, you can just view this whole uh, term as a benchmark of the optimal gains from trade. And in the future slides, I will show you that this benchmark can further be upper bounded by the gains from trade of the two mechanisms. Uh, also, uh, we know that this is upper bound for regular distributions, and for non-regular distributions, uh, we need to do ironing just as the one-sided market, and uh, these, two, these two things is uh, changed to the iron virtual value, okay? So, uh, so to prove uh, our main theorem, we just first look at the gains from trade of the two mechanisms. So here we just assume like uh, the uh, buyers and sellers distribution are, co are continuous for simplicity, okay? So now uh, in the seller offering mechanism, the uh, seller is asked to post a price, Q. So what is the uh, Q that the, will the seller choose? The seller will choose the Q that maximizes her expected utility. So if you lack UQ be the seller's utility by choosing the post price Q, it can be further written as the following. So the buyer will accept the posted price if and only if B is greater than Q, which happens with probability one minus FQ. And whenever the, uh, the trade is made, the seller can gain utility Q minus S. So this utility is de defined as the uh, multiplication of these two terms, okay? So to maximize this function uh, over all Q, we need to take the derivative and it's the following and uh, we should let this derivative to be zero, okay? So notice that for regular distributions, this function is monotone. So there exists a unique Q such that uh, this derivative is zero. You can just uh, check uh, offline uh, by taking the second derivative to, uh, to make sure that this is uh, indeed a maximizer. So uh, we can see that the, uh, the unique um, value that the seller will choose is defined as the uh, phi inverse of x, okay? So it means that in our mechanism, the trade will be made if and only if b is greater than q, which is equivalent to phi of b greater than s, okay? So this is the gains from trade of the first mechanism. So similarly, we can show that uh, in the buyer offering mechanism, the trade is made if and only if the buyer's value is greater than the seller's virtual value, okay? So to finish the proof, this is the benchmark we come up with uh, by the duality framework, and we separate these two terms uh, into two parts, and we take the maximum of each part separately, okay? And since we notice that the allocation probability is taken between zero and one, it's maximized when this x is one if and only if phi b is greater than s, okay? And it's similar for the second term. Further, for the first term, we notice that the uh, phi b is always smaller than b. So we can just relax this term by the gains from trade b minus s, which is essentially the gains from trade of our mechanism, okay? And we do similar things uh, for the second part 
they suffer bounded by the gains from trade of the buyer offering mechanism. So in summary, uh, we showed that in the two sided market, there is a two approximation result for the bilateral trading setting and also a uh, two approximation for the double auctions with an arbitrary downward close feasibility constraints. Also, we use the, uh, the Lagrangian duality framework to come up with a benchmark even for the uh, multi-dimensional two-sided markets. And we do hope that uh, our uh, techniques here and the duality framework can help us to uh, come up with the approximation result for the multi-dimensional settings. That's all for my talk. Thank you.